So it's quite a late, uh, <laughs> late private tour. Of VIP the boat. tour for yeah, two people. Yeah, VIP tour. Yeah, please get inside. Yeah, let's go into our conference room. That will be the first place we will see today. Uh, so if you want to have a seat, I will give you an overall first introduction about what we do at Plastic Odyssey. So Plastic Odyssey, we have two main missions. As I said, clean up the past, build the future. Clean up the past will be everything related to recycling uh, or empower more recyclers, uh, entrepreneurs that recycle plastic around the world. Uh, and Builds of the Future will be everything related to awareness um, uh, to the student, to the school, uh, about alternatives to plastic. And it's also why I'm with Richard today, uh, with your solution about like uh, no plastic-free packaging. Uh, we always try to engage also discussion because it's also a great way of like yeah, um, having less production of plastic <coughs> in the world. Um, <coughs> where like recycling plastic, we mostly I don't know, you, you see sometimes we also like try to <laughs> also let people know during each stopover what are the alternative shop. Mm. <laughs> uh, your solution could have been here, I guess. Um, I don't know if you have a proper shop. Or no, we, don't, we sell mainly to hotels, restaurants, bars, cafes, okay. some of the corporates. Yeah, B2B. Sell. Hong Kong Express, uh, for example, is a big one of our clients, like a corporate client, but it's mainly restaurants and mm -hmm. hotels. Um, so here we are on the conference room, uh, it's our biggest uh, workspace let's say for uh, usually also our own team uh, to work uh, but mostly uh, we have an incubation program on board of Plastic Odyssey so during each stopover we welcome local entrepreneurs uh, for mostly talking about uh, business model. Uh, so you can see this is also our recycling academy so it's an online free course that we have on the, our website and uh, a lot of subjects, uh, if you're going through them, it's about how do you make a viable business model from a plastic waste. Uh, this is the best way uh, to make sure we have like a um, longer uh, impact. Environmental impact is to make sure people running their business and making money out of it. Uh, so normally in a normal <laughs> stopover, let's say, uh, this, this room will be uh, full of like 10 local entrepreneurs uh, and we will have like a, a, sh a time for sharing knowledge about how do which type of pro uh, of waste are they processing and how they making uh, money out of it and uh, we can like this document those kind of solution and spreading all our way uh, to other entrepreneurs in other countries. Um, so each country kind of uh, as, as far as we have seen each country sometimes are really facing a very uh, specific uh, plastic pollution, so we want uh, re result of the it won't result of the same kind of final product uh, that those people are making. Uh, it's really what we're looking at. It's people that uh, recycling a waste to a final product that uh, can be can find a market a market fit. Only plastic waste. Mostly plastic waste, yeah. You always kind of uh, getting into also people that dealing with organic waste. Uh, you also getting close to people that working maybe with tetra pack, so carton also, carton box for example. Um, Metal. Yeah, aluminium as well. Uh, for example, something that we you need also to kind of know is like there is high value waste, let's say high value plastic waste, and yeah, there yeah. is low value plastic waste. Uh, so for example. I know the number. For example, also, uh, so PET, the number one, category number one, uh, will be already uh, seen in many countries as a high value plastic waste, mm -hmm. as aluminium and carton box will be also considered high value uh, waste, because there is already a full chain of processing this waste into, uh, for example, plastic bottle, into a new plastic bottle. So if mm -hmm. you look at what people, uh, formal or informal collector, uh, look for in the bin or they will look mostly for PET bottle because there is already people buying it for recycling it. Where plastic I know people who buy it. Do you know people yeah, who buy if it? If you know suppliers, I'm looking for suppliers. Yeah, yeah, we, we always, uh, it's quite easy for us to know who are buying PET uh, because they are well known, they are, on, uh, they are on the market for already some years. Uh, but Plastic Odyssey, once again, is uh, way much more. De we are way much more dedicated to understand who are the people that are dealing with the low-value plastic waste. So it will be, like as you see on exactly, as you, you see on this. Recycle, like, 
we've, we start to make projects that recycle PS. Uh, you have one in Hong Kong that my colleague Thibault that you see over there um, also was organizing a visit uh, on his factory and having him also oh on no. board. Um, do, does he do a final product out of his PS? Yeah, I think so there is one, when he this NGO called Polyphone. They Polyphone. densify the EPS, the cell phone, yeah. into lumps, and then they send it to uh, pellets, pellet recyclers from Hong Kong mm. to do pellet, and then the pellet they send it to Vietnam, China, whatever, any place of industry willing to buy EPS. Yeah. Okay. Because they've, they've banned the use of uh, the EPS tableware, you know, like takeaway, but yeah. mm. there's still so much of it with all but the fruit and vegetables you see in the markets, yeah. it piled up, you know, the really big PS. Yeah, yeah. It's, ah, yeah. It's, it's probably mainly that. It's mainly also electronic device, no television. Yeah, yeah, machine. in the in the packaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is sure. perfectly clean and it's yeah. a good product to process and to resell. Yeah. And it's crazy because first time I've done a visit at the twenty first floor <laughs> the recycling factory. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I've not heard that. So they what do they process the EPS into? Like pellets or? Uh, yeah. No yeah, pellets. Obviously, they make it smaller. No pellet, pellet. Bullet. No, pellet. Small. Uh, yeah, small piece runners. of plastic. First like a pellet. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, pellet. Sorry, pellet, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turn it into. They they, they shred it. They and melt they it down. Somewhere. Melt it down like that. Yeah. So one big box yeah. becomes a sort yeah. of it's handful like of pellets. It's yeah. Ninety to one. Right. In volume. Crazy. Because you can't transport that. Yeah, that's, that's a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big. So then they transport it back to the recyclers, and with the recyclers, what you do. You take the this type of stuff, right. you shred it, and you turn it into pellets, which is like little flakes, mm. which is like the raw element mm. of any a ball plastic, of it, yeah. Yeah. plastic uh, product. That's the that way you start with the pellets yeah. or the flakes. Yeah, right? the little flakes. It's yeah. not flakes because flakes are just shredded, but little pellets, little pieces of plastic. And then they can inject it into whatever. The granules? Is that the, uh, yeah, the granules. Yeah. That's great that that's getting treated and not just ending up in landfill. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's yeah, small part, I think, which is treated, but... What, what are they called? I'm going to make a note of that. Polyfoam. Polyfoam. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah because... Uh, uh, they took the report from the government. Oh, come on. Where they... <laughs> where they... So it's in Cantonese, mm. but... They put it in ton per year. How many ton they have of every waste. Mm -hmm. So yes, this type of information, and when you look at it's 40 tons of styrofoam, maybe it's per, per month, I don't know. Yeah, you know, these look, figures look right, because we, you know, we sell replacements with some of this stuff, yeah. being the bags and the, the um, you know, takeaway boxes um, and cutlery. Yeah, yeah so that's it's, it's a lot, it's a big <laughs> volume, right? Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. numbers for a small plane. Yeah, well, that's yeah small it's plan. always yeah. big numbers with waste, so it's difficult to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we and we saw another one in Vietnam as well. Uh, we always try uh, to look also. <laughs> we we try even to look for <coughs> projects that know how to turn it into a final product. Mm. Uh, because if you only stop at like selling the pellet, uh, maybe for PS it's a bit different. But for the other type of plastic, you will mostly compete with like virgin plastic. And then if you're only selling the, the small uh, granule, a pellet, uh, your market uh, kind of power will always be um, competing with virgin plastics that will always remain quite low. Because so it's even the virgin plastics cheaper, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's why we kind of, in this wheel of like uh, having entrepreneur here and showcasing that you can turn it like this is the result of turning yogurt pots. I was going to say, what's this market? I can tell that that's made of something clever. Yeah, well, yogurt pots. Yeah, yogurt pots. Um, so you can turn it into a product. Then later, we, you will need also some other skill, like marketing skill and everything. Uh, but the, the result in terms of how many uh, yeah, plastic you can uh, compact in one product is start to be interesting and later for like a viable economic uh, model uh, it start also to be uh, Is it solid? That's solid? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really it's solid. Quite, it feels quite light, doesn't it? For no, it's really, is, is it really heavy? It's really heavy. <laughs> when you need to move it from here to like getting inside there, it's really heavy. Right. 
falls away, yeah, that's what the hinges. Yeah, that's cool. What could I say in this room in addition? So we have like a water filtration system. That's also a great way to let people. Well, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a French project. Uh, they, they have win cool. like, um, uh, they are with the, um, the production for making the furniture for the Olympic game in France. Oh, a, great. A chair like this costs like $200. Uh, so there is different way of like US dollars. yeah letting people know that you can make a product at the end that is quite uh, quite expensive let's say uh, once again it's a different way of getting a market uh, market fit so water filtration system so on board we have managed to get rid of any plastic bottle uh, we Good. don't need it um, yeah, you have to really great way also to let people know that uh, best way to reducing your waste is also yeah uh, for police maker it's also not to use it. Yeah, not use it first, that's completely right, refuse it, but mostly also in power more like uh, yeah, infrastructure uh, system for getting yeah, clean water to your people. You uh, can tell it's a French boat because they've got lots of wine <laughs> in the fridge. But look, we cannot, we cannot open it. You can, can tell it, you, you, you can tell it we are on the boat because we cannot touch it. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, but when you sail off, you can open it. Again. Yeah, but normally you don't drink you have of navigation. To be international waters. Yes, exactly. Yeah, goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you have seen already the exhibition, well, this is really very, I very. Didn't have a, I didn't have a good one. No, before. but this is really, really little regarding what we have uh, on the first floor of the mall right now. Yeah, but we're yeah. carrying an exhibition on board uh, and we're trying every stopover to document one alternative to plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I guess we have more like 30 or 35 samples of alternative to plastic uh, from also solid, solid product, but sponge. Uh, or will be things for carrying your cup, uh, a lot of oh things with natural... Is that from here? This is not from here, this is, uh, this is from Vietnam. Yeah, and this, obviously the grass straws we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is mostly happening on those uh, exhibition we have. Huh? Yeah, this come from Panama, so obviously on our way we're meeting also a lot of people that... Uh, it's a gift? Yeah, yeah it's a gift, uh, creating art out of plastic waste. Uh, so that's also always a nice thing to see how people can be just creative, creative uh, with yeah. something that most of the people uh, consider as a waste mm -hmm. or a pollution. Um, Out of interest, how, how you said you had some entrepreneurs here with new products yeah. as well as the polyphone guys. Yeah. Did you have any any other interesting new innovative products? in terms of plastic alternatives or recycling? You mean in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, yeah. Uh, in Hong Kong, yeah, we met also V-Cycle. So V-Cycle, yeah. V-Cycle. Yeah. Uh, they came nice. also on board. We have been visiting yeah, also the factories. Uh, they're mostly making boards. Uh, who else have we met in Hong Kong? Free the Sea, like an orange, uh, orange logo. Uh, but they are more like... Uh, on their part, they are more like focusing on um, uh, social kind of uh, social work with like the waste picker. Uh, okay. oh so right. yeah, having yeah. a small factory where they can process uh, some plastic in a good at most good uh, good environment um, for the workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. For the workers uh, in Hong Kong, mostly uh, older people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we have quite uh, we have been onboarding more than I think 250 people so far. Uh, how long? So in how many days? It's been two years that the boat have less friends, uh, French, and um, and we Hong Kong is the 25th country where we stop. Uh, you can be plotting out. Yeah. And how long have you been here, and how long you stay here? Uh, in Hong Kong, it's been 10 days, and we stay until Sundays before to set sail to Taiwan. Taiwan later uh, Philippines in between Manila and yeah, Cebu. This Sunday, coming Sunday. Yeah, this coming Sunday. And then you go to Philippines. And then we go to Philippines. That's why I'm very happy to having you because it's the really last moment that I can uh, host you in the, in these boats for giving you a tour and maybe well, have got some. To prep, prep the boat to get going again. Yes, yes. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of things, but once oh. you start sailing, everything needs to be Packing tight and packed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tomorrow and day after tomorrow, there's no visit. Uh, since there is public visit, uh, oh, yeah. that's quite the, we're not doing so much of like public visit, but as we are like in partner with L'Occitan and L'Occitan have also made like a pop up and everything, we try uh, also to uh, onboard of the some of the customer to also discover the the project. Where usually we mostly open the visit to like school and school and uh, and university. Mm. And also having those entrepreneurs, so it's already quite a lot of people for us on the board. Yeah, yeah. On board, uh, two weeks we usually have like more than 600 people that come mm. 
come in. Yeah. It's good there's that much interest. Yeah, 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 definitely. Plastic, uh, at least alternative to plastic uh, and recycling plastic uh, start to be quite in need of solution. <laughs> so tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, there is public visits? Yeah, And tomorrow. so people who now, they, they learn about this, they can sign up and visit tomorrow? Yeah. Or is it full already? It's or not what? free, but uh, yes, you can. How much is it? I guess it's 150 HKD. So but it's fine, people can come and pay. And pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, definitely. Yeah, how, yeah. how do they do? They, they, it's on the website? Mm. Yeah, you need, to, you need to go on the pop-up of L'Occitane, it's right, the entrance of the Arbor Mall. Yes. And, uh, and you do have like a full tour from the pop-up to the alternative oh, okay. exhibition to the oh. boat. Good. So I will so share the video tonight and yeah. people can see it. And That's can, great. Tomorrow we have yes, uh, one please. million people. Yes. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, please, please, if you are interested in uh, learning more about recycling and alternative, uh, it's a great, great uh, full experience uh, in between our partner, our exhibition and the, the visit tour. Okay. What time to what time the public visit? I think it's from 8 to 6, something like this. Okay. Okay, I invite you to move in another room. Uh, maybe the one that making this boat such a unique boat. That's what we call the laboratory, uh, the recycling laboratory. Okay. okay, it's already starting to get dark. Yeah, no, that's now we have a great screen that I don't remember it was here like four oh, years ago. You're right, that's new. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's completely new. But four years ago you were here already? Yeah, I used to live in Hong Kong since two ah, years. Okay. Ah, yeah, but you, you personally, not yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah, Like in the entrepreneurship uh, scene of Hong Kong. Okay, here we are on the uh, recycling lab. I can let my chief uh, mechanician go first. Hello, welcome on board. How are you doing? Uh, so here we will uh, usually we use it as like a, a workshop uh, area. Uh, so when I was saying that we welcome entrepreneurs, it's also half of the time we're spending it here. Uh, where they obviously bring their own waste, waste, for example, and we can like do some research and development on how do we turn this waste into a final product. Uh, so, just to give you a dimension, a dimension, um, the capacity we have on board, we could process like up to two tons of plastic uh, by day. Uh, we don't collect the plastic at sea, uh, even if it's a boat, and a lot of people think that we might collect the plastic at sea. It will be a completely different boat if we will do so. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so and people also people bring the plastic to your boat. Yeah, yeah. For example, when we uh, welcome entrepreneur, we usually we ask them to bring the plastic, and uh, and we can process it here. Or it happens that we're doing some also beach cleaning or stuff like this because yeah. as the boat is going in very isolated island, for example, being 20 people on board, it can allow us to do a mission of clean up mission. And the good thing is we are able to turn the, the plastic that we collect from the uh, from the sea or from the beach, beach will be more right. Uh, into final products that we can give it away to the closest island, for example, or to the community who help to make the, yeah. the cleaning. And yeah, this is uh, already. How long does it take to process and to turn this into a? a fi but as I say, two ton in one day. On this, this. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It it's, a lot. Yeah, yeah. On this from, from the morning to evening, it just take a few hours. The what? It just takes a few hours to process to turn into like a recycled plastic. But so everything will yeah, be kind of the kit. yeah. Everything will be will depend a bit about the shredder. If we're talking about our plastic, uh, so this can this have like a production of like 150 kilo by hours. Uh, it can shred 150 kilo of our plastic by hours. Shredder, yeah, it goes in the top. So you will put uh, our plastic like uh, HDPE. You will put inside. There is some blade inside. Attention. And well, I don't have a lot of remain stuff because we have been doing some uh, yeah, that things makes sense. and we're shredding into like a, lo a low volume uh, flakes. of waste. Yeah, flakes, exactly. So this will be, if I make it a bit simple, let's say, let's divide plastic into two categories, hard plastic and soft plastic. Uh, even if in terms of hard plastic, we don't recycle any PVC on board because they kind of produce a lot of toxicity, smoke. Uh, that we are not in capacity of collecting or treating, so we take away the PVC, but for the rest of our plastic, we can shred it. Or if it's soft plastic, like pack packaging bag or stuff like this, we will use a densificator, uh, en français agglomérateur, and like this from a soft plastic bag, uh, where the system is quite simple as well. Huh? Uh, it's just like some uh, um, 
like a scissor. It worked like a scissor, right. and he he hit the plastic as well. And like this, we will get like a result like something a bit harder uh, in terms of uh, soft plastic bag into. Uh, so, so the heat set just sort of shreds up. Exactly. So it's like a blender. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, a yeah. Blender. like a smoothie. Exactly, like a blender, and That's like good this. That's good so from this or from the flakes, we then be able to move into two types or three types of different products. So either we will get something, this is not my best example, let's say. Well, they've been moving. So either we will be able to get this kind of results. So those, the flakes, we will melt it into a plastic oven or, and then we will press it into an hydraulic press. So we will make able to get boards. Uh, the finishing of the board will depend if you're sorting out the color of the plastic, the difference. Sometimes PP, HDP can also have like a mi different melting points. Plastic Odyssey, we don't focus so much about sorting so hard. We are really more focusing about the quality, the strength of the material and, uh, and getting something that um, as a final product is interesting for selling. Uh, this is another type of result that we can get. This, we will need to use another machine. We will need to use the extrusion. So yeah, the how does it, what do you do with those, what do you do with those pellets or the flakes? Where, where do they go into these machines? Yeah, so either you put it into a mold and you're melting it first and you press it with the hydraulic press. Uh, in Philippines, we will get rid of those two. Uh, we are also changing the laboratory uh, regarding what okay. we're learning. Now you can have like hydraulic press that heat at the same time, so you get more space. But well, it just presses out the shape, basically, yeah. as it Yeah, 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 exactly. So if it has melt before, you get something, a result like this. Okay. If it has not melt... Uh, so it's either just a mold you pour it into and it sets, yeah. or it's like extruded. No, 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 you have, you have a mold that you put in the oven, uh, like a... Yeah, pizza mold, let's say, something yeah. a bit more heavy, uh, like, and then you press it at the hydraulic press and you, you get like a board. For this one, it's a bit different, you need an extrusion machine. Extrusion machine, the principle is again quite simple. At Plastic Odyssey, we're really focusing on low-tech machines, so things are easy to maintain, easy to replicate. Uh, all our blue, uh, blueprint are like free on the website. Uh, as it's an NGO, we don't sell anything, the main purpose is build a a global network uh, about recyclers and uh, alternative to plastic. Um, but this product, so a funnel where you're going to put your flakes or even the soft plastic, you're yeah. not going to mix the two together, but you can either work on each of them. A funnel and you have inside a screw that's going to push the plastic flakes. Uh, here they are not here because we remove them during a public visit, but you have like heating collar going to hit, uh, meanwhile the screw is going to push around 200 degrees and you can you gain result like a paste, the plastic will be turned into paste and here you just plug two mold uh, of different size and everything, no, 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 this is uh, for the PS, I will tell you after. Uh, and that pours into a mo another yeah. mold? Yeah, this, the plastic paste will be pushed into a mold and the result will be that you go to do an exothermic reaction, so you're putting the mold into like a water tank. This is just plain water. And then you can easily remove because of the temperature shock, the plastic will uh, yeah, retract a bit of percentage. And then you remove it. And the great thing about those kind of results, so it's black because we have not been sorting by color. So when you mix all the color, you result by having a product in black, black color. And this you can really work it if it was wood. You don't need. You can use carpentry uh, tools. And uh, we have seen projects in Colombia where they're building houses 100% made of about recycling plastic. There's uh, a company here. I can't remember the name. They make bricks. Did you meet those guys? Yeah, uh, Ecobrick. Yeah. Uh, not myself, but uh, I guess my colleague you have seen upstairs. They are yeah. they are in touch with them. But they're uh, they're more like house bricks, like. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a standard yeah, but the great thing, the thing we have learned so far is when you're building a, a final product, it's better if you're making it exactly as it is on the market. Because if you're trying to make like funny, funny shape, like this one, it will be way much harder to sell because the people will say, okay, it's funny, okay, it's recycling, but how do I, uh, do, you, do I explain to my people that how are they going to build the houses or the architects? who have been designing the house for a standard type of product, 
they were going to say, yeah, but I have no idea how many of those I need. So yeah, just, what, yeah. what we have learned so far is if you train to make a, sorry, <laughs> a final product, it's better you make it as it is as an alternative yeah. to the one yeah. people really, using it. Really the same with some of our plastic alternative products. So yeah. a good example is a coffee cup lid. So everyone's used to a normal plastic lid and our lids are made of a gas pulp. Okay. So we can possibly recyclable. But we've made them so they look very similar. Obviously they're the same size, but aesthetically they look the same. So mentally people, the yeah. change is easier than having some crazy Fancy shape, shape or that people aren't used to seeing. Yeah, and the same with lunch boxes as well. If you replace the plastic with something the same size and shape, people are more comfortable making a shift rather than coming up with something like hexagonal. But, you know, yeah, and also in terms of quantity, like people will be more willing to keep the same because yeah, they are exactly. already uh, kind of the way of. To change much, you don't have to change everything. Like if you're making a house out of this rather than normal bricks, the architects have got to rethink the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Make it as simple as, people, as simple as you can to get people to adopt the solution. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we have we have reached the same conclusion also at Plastic Odyssey. So, um, so something is like so in in Vietnam. Even if the boats could not make a stopover, uh, an interesting project we have met so far. It's someone that uh, is recycling polystyrene. Uh, as we said a bit earlier, polystyrene is one of the plastic uh, waste uh, that we we have not seen so many projects so far around the world uh, being able to recycle into a final product. And mostly because of one constraint is like transportation cost, as exactly you say, Richard, uh, quite difficult because it's taking a lot of volume uh, for the weight, for waiting almost nothing, wait, waiting almost nothing. The, the, the uh, innovative idea that this entrepreneur had in Vietnam was to load on trucks a small densification densificator ma machine uh, on 10 trucks and going all around uh, central Vietnam to meet people, uh, reduce the size of the of the polystyrene and being able to produce like a, a raw material like this, so way much more heavy, more, way much more compact. And once he was reaching like three ton, four ton on his trucks, he could bring the truck back into his factory. So he was reducing a lot his transportation cost, and then he was making this kind of products that mostly used for frame, uh, like family, family picture. Oh, and picture frame. Picture frame. That's made of polystyrene. Yeah, made of polystyrene. How do you do that? Just like. I oh, know. So it. yeah, those they they compact they compact it. It looks like it's been yeah, yeah, compact and then they shred it again for turn it into a small, uh, small flakes that later on they will ex yeah, yeah, extrude right. and yeah, yeah. So this kind of the middle step where they just making a product way more, more transportation cost wise interesting. So yeah, quite a great way. Um, that's, that's, that looks very professional. Quite yeah. is really good. Good quality, right? Even got like a wood effect going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got like a, it's kind of a, a, a coat. So yeah, uh, it's not part of the polystyrene. It's just yeah, something right. that is uh, applying. Coat on the top, yeah. But uh, you can you can have like golden uh, impression feeling, and no, it's a great product, and with a great uh, market fit because he was looking for building a 10 million uh, factories. Uh, so yeah, it's quite of uh, interesting story to to document and share then later on our platform. So we have also a YouTube channel where alternative to plastic are, are documented and uh, storytell storytelling are like shared, uh, and also entrepreneur and um, so quite a lot of things happening also on our website uh, in terms of community gathering information. Yeah. The good, one of the good solutions I've seen in Southeast Asia. Most of the sensations, they're turning the plastic into like tarmac replacement for the roads. So rather than using the, yeah, the oil and tarmac, just yeah. So I'm missing because yeah, you can use a lot of plastic in roads. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pavements. Uh, is that what this is? Pavement floor. Well, it's yeah. like concrete, doesn't it? Yeah. Really bad uh, as well. Because this is mixed with something else. Ah, right. What do you think is mixed with? Concrete. No. No, no, sand. The, yeah, sand. Right. Exactly. Concrete, so, sand, and cement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You have some people that going. You're going to replace the sand by by plastic, or going to replace the concrete uh, by plastic. 
Uh, it's kind of interesting in terms of resistance, but uh, it's uh, the thin border where Plastic Odyssey try also to let people know that yeah, it's kind of a cosmetic solution, let's say, because you are not making the life of the ones that are going to recycling it easier later. Yeah, what you can't really do much with that later. No. That's end of life, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be on the road for way much more longer. Years, than yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, we need to find some solution for the, all the ways that already have been producing and really, really avoiding it to reach the river and sea where no one know of, up to today to collect it or even recycling it because at sea it gets damaged way much more easier uh, and it's sinking way much more faster than what people think. Uh, so regarding yeah, the need that we need to do something with, it's kind of a solution for building materials, uh, but yeah kind of um, a learning process also on the way. Do you have any guess about how do we make those? Any guess? Yeah, from which type of waste? Two types of plastic, is it laminated? Yeah, it's aluminium. Like, yeah, aluminium foil. But it's written on. <laughs> so oh. it will be all the favorite snacks, uh, Really difficult also to recycle because yeah, then it doesn't get a really. It's not it, aluminium it, plastic, is it? It won't. It won't. It won't remain for very long. So, like What's yeah. What's the purpose of that? What's the usage? Yeah, it's uh, for wall. Uh, Just normal tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like uh, isolation. It looks uh, like Antico. You know that. Antico? Which one? It's, it's a very expensive like bathroom tiling, floor tiles. No, I don't know this one. Antico. Antico. Not sure where it's from. But that's what so it looks yeah. like. Yeah, I guess that's quite already uh, quite a lot of information <laughs> regarding what we do. Yeah. And, uh, this is a big brick <laughs> yeah, that, that we're also making in, uh, in Africa right now. We have some entrepreneurs building it. Uh, this one is also a mix of plastic and sand. Well, sand's reasonably readily available, depending on where you are. Yeah, exactly. Regarding which country you Why are. Why is it written purple? Huh? Why is it written purple? Uh, because it's the name of the... It was the name of the project uh, uh, in, I think, in Togo, in Africa. Well, that's got your name on it as well. Yeah. So it's more about looking around the global Documenting. solutions as rather than as you're going looking at pollution in the ocean. I mean, obviously, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the driver is to reduce ocean pollution, but we, we, you're more focused on what happens in the ports rather than there are other projects going around ex collecting plastic. Exactly. The main goal is focused on the solution. How can we help to Stop bring... Stop going in in the first place. Yeah, yeah. How can we help people to... To, yeah, to bring their own solution on land for avoiding the plastic to get to reach the sea. And once again, this is uh, a working place for us to welcome people and have some uh, exchange of knowledge on how can we process the plastic into a finished product. Uh, but the main goal is mostly to share the whole people's story on all the way because they can be very formal or informal uh, people around the world. So it's mostly to connect the dots and build a, a community of people. So yeah, it's great, fantastic. Really interesting. It's great. It's quite interesting. What about I always say about our business? The main rule for us is that if a piece of our packaging falls in the water, it doesn't wash up on a beach in the Philippines or in Thailand or Saiko in Hong Kong. It will marine degrade within marine debris, days yeah. or weeks. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's always been our benchmark to everything we do, even though a lot of it goes to different places. Yeah. It does end up in the water. You know, and what we used to say is uh, the marine debris is usually 1% of the plastic you will see, 99% will already nice start break. in sinking, yeah, exactly. We usually, when we do a keynote presentation, we try to yeah, raise awareness about the best way to keep the ocean clean for now, regarding the urgent, is really to work from on lands. Really focusing on getting, stopping the plastic to reach river and seas because uh, that's the best way to avoid uh, more plastic reaching the sea. As there is almost no project so far that know how to collect microplastic or even uh, microplastic, but microplastic, uh, like as a sinking, is uh, yeah, you need like capacity of nets. Uh, and yeah, regarding the some interesting projects, aren't you know, algae and bacteria 
eating it through it. I mean, I don't know. You'll know more than I do. But yeah. There's stuff about how, how do you do that at a global level? It's yeah, that's, possible, that's, isn't it? that's the, everything is about scale, scale uh, or scalable. So what you what you try to do is something that can be replicated also. It's also for your solution, I guess. It's also something that you're looking at. It's like something that is easy to implement and something that later can be also copy in other in other region of the world and accessible also it's a lot about how do you make something accessible to the public and competitive once again uh, yeah, for making money yeah. right so where are you going next in philippines in manila or are you going Mani 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 yeah. Yeah. busy back to france and then yeah a full years left of expedition from philippines to india to indian ocean to south africa and coming back to europe uh, hopefully in 2026. you've been to australia no it's not going to so yeah um, very happy to continue to chat also with you because I, i've been also meeting some people also in vietnam they have like you know some refill station they are also meeting some people in cambodia they are also selling some of your alternative products that you might have so I don't know if you are always happy to We're be connected. We're always looking for new innovative solutions, you know, and we're partners with various people like the Grass Stores guy, yeah. uh, producers in um, yeah, I have, uh, I have some people to advise you Sorry. and very inspiring story, it's yeah. why also I, really, I always love to connect uh, with you yeah, guys if I'm making, cool. sorry, a big picture but my job is also a big part of connecting with the people that are related to alternative to plastic because they're focusing on bringing solutions that are like, yeah, good alternative uh, to plastic, so... And any, any new or innovative ideas would be great to know. Like we're working with a couple of small projects in Thailand at the moment. We were, look, we're using um, coconut water and, uh, as a product to make things like straws, for example. Okay. Uh, which is an interesting project. Uh, yeah, so people making pallets also from coconuts. Yeah, right, okay. Similar sort of idea, yeah. Then, yeah. Um, but I, we, I always say to our clients, you know, products got to be sustainable, obviously, it has to be functional and at the right price point. And it's getting that mix right, isn't it? Because at the moment, there's some really cool solutions, but they're quite expensive. Yeah. Well, I won't tease you too long, but I have some people to introduce to you. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the Danish guy in Vietnam, my wonderful friend in Vietnam and in Cambodia also, they are really focusing on alternatives to plastic and promoting yeah. alternatives to plastic. Uh, no, no, They'll I mean, be looking to go to market solutions, so yeah. we might be able to provide a market for yeah, them, yeah. or at least try, try out some of their products without yes. them. Yeah. Hey. As, as, as for us, I think there is enough plastic to recycling before to start to be competitive between each other and I guess for alternative to plastic there is also enough to do before to, to start to see from other countries people being like uh, competitive too much or so. collaborative. Yeah, yeah. Protection. I love this. Class mas machine. But yeah, don't. Sorry if it's already full dark. <laughs> Do you have any guess? Do you have any guess about this one? What this uh, machine is used for? It's not for the boat to function, right? No, 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 no. It could. It's noise, by the way. It's not uh, the no, it's like the generator. Oh. We we don't we we don't have it's the perfect. chance to take the shore power, so we need to yeah. run the generator. Yeah. Any I'm guess? Whether the boat was about to leave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, I'm sure you would love to get I, uh, into some I'd be more than having a trip out. Yeah. So well, it's, some, it's collecting, something's going yeah, in the it's top. Collecting isn't something it? here. So this is a funnel. You put plastic inside. That's already a hint. This is something that I show you a bit under. It's like the extrusion. So you yeah, have yeah. a screw, and those are the heating collars. It's like that a spiral corkscrew that pushes. Yeah, everything exactly, along. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, infinity, like infinity, infinity screw. This is a chamber that's going to heat the plastic to 500 degrees. Hermetic chamber. And what do you see over there? You will have like a cooling condensation. Uh, um, no, the one behind. The one behind. Those. It's going to to cool down the gas that you're going to get from the plastic. So mostly we're getting this. What is that? 
This is the result of what we're looking by putting the plastic into this uh, pyrolysis. So it's some petrochemical. It's oil. Oil. Yeah, you, you can just you, you reduce can reduce it back into what it. Yeah, it's it's exactly. Exactly. Oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you just uh, move back the plastic into his uh, original state. It's, it's so the you can state. Use that in your car. Yeah, definitely. In your two-stroke, four-stroke uh, engine you in your cars. Could you use that in a car? Yeah, 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 definitely. Usually yeah. what we say is like you do 50-50. Uh, That's but you a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the well, only what, thing... What else is left? Uh, what gunk some comes out? There must be some sludgy gunk. You have some just like kind of carbon uh, carbon residues. But the balance most is... Most of the carbon goes into there. No, no. Uh, the carbon's in the oil, right? Yeah, yeah. The carbon you, you collect it is like kind of a black... Uh, it's a bit of black, yeah. Like residue, but the let's say the quite clean process. Yeah, yeah. You put like for 30 kilo of waste, you can get 28 liters of oil. I mean, for some of the probably more developing countries, that's got to be a great solution for them, right? Because there's yeah, what are you doing? It's a question, not a solution. No, 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 no. I know, I know. It's also it's interesting because the the rendement. How do you say rendement? Profitability? Yeah. Uh, no, so you turn to a 30 kilo of waste into 28 liters of oil. So it should be great, but you still need to keep the, the heat from the chamber to 500 degrees. So you still need electricity, electricity. and log fire. 15 <laughs> liters of oil for keeping uh, 500 degrees. So then it starts to be less interesting. Where it should be more interesting, if and we are not able to do it in France, but you should be able normally to get the heat from the gas to keep the chamber hot. But this in France, we cannot do like a closed circuit. We are forced to release the gas uh, of the process of the pyrolysis. So I guess in like developed countries, we will be like, um, we will be limited, limited by our own regulation. Just the gas supply to make it work. Yeah, also. Yeah. Which costs money. Yeah, now we have seen many projects from uh, Costa Rica to Colombia uh, to uh, Indonesia that making their also their own way of uh, pyrolysis. Uh, but so far, we not have documented any of those that was like very profitable. But it probably make does it make sense to do it in a much bigger scale? Yeah, yeah. People are trying to do so now. Yeah. So people are trying to make it really bigger scale. But then it's the investment, the yeah. investment is quite huge, and the maintenance of it is like not really for developed country let's say uh, if you later on have like a big uh, a factory plan for turning plastic back into oil uh, yeah it's kind of seen um, that about yeah oil that's nice huh? it's always cool. so yeah that was maybe the last machine I could show you it's a great way for us to let people know that yeah plastic should not be considered as waste because you can turn it back into the its own elements but so far it's we still found this kind of Alternate, not alternative, but this kind of uh, machine into research and development because so far we've not have documented any project that seem to be profitable. So this is a quite a new idea, a newish idea then, innovative yeah, yeah, yeah. idea. Yeah. That's really interesting. I guess. Because you know, in some place in Europe in particular, they have these big incinerators, don't they? Yeah, waste like to energy. And it's do those incinerators create electricity from the heat they yeah, generate? Yeah, exactly. Not doing this. No. No, it's it what it what is they call waste to energy, and usually so he, he probably heats water, which then yeah yeah it's a cali a plastic got quite a good uh, cal uh, uh, qualification no uh, calorific. But yeah, a lot of energy comes when you burn it. Thank you. A lot of energy comes when you burning it, and uh, but most of the projects that burn plastic to turn it into electricity are big uh, cemetery. So they they making like concrete. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then you have a lot of smoke and so like a lot of uh, treatment of like uh, a residue to do as well. Uh, but it's a way also that people say that you can get rid of the plastic in burning it and um, and use the heat from the burn to make electricity or like power or like the fast factories. The smoke that comes off. Which yeah. Is yeah. Problem from a pollution perspective. Yeah. yeah. Or the, re or the product you will make out of this energy and usually it's, it's made for making concrete so yeah kind of uh, yeah sorry I guess I don't know if I was a bit long but uh, no, no, just check it's an hour it's perfect <laughs> let's just have a quick self 
Yay. Take a photo. Or well, you yeah. might have a video, mind we? Do you mind taking a photo? Where are the people? Uh, where are the That's people? That's a great photo opportunity. Just in, no, no, they usually don't like so much that we're standing close to the... It's okay, it's okay. That's a good one. Nice to meet you. Thank See you, bye-bye. You, you can come visit the boat huh, as you want. Be quick, though. Yeah, be quick, though. <laughs>